So, I had sold the basement and I have replaced it with this amp. It is a brown face deluxe amp made in the 19th week of 1961. I was first hip to these amps by a friend of mine who has a very popular YouTube channel. You know who you are. Um, I seen him playing it and I thought, man, that amp sounds great. So when I had the chance to get one, I jumped at it. Uh, it's a very small little amp, lightweight, and has a lot more utility than the basement did. The basement, because it's a head and a cab and it's ultra loud, it's really a man out of time. It, it, mm, at one time, the basement was, you could use a basement easily. It wasn't considered a very loud amp. Nowadays, good luck with that. It's crazy loud. The standards that are, you, when you go into uh, bars and clubs and whatnot now, they just don't want you to play that loud anymore. <clears throat> Maybe that'll come back someday. And, and basement heads are, are easy to get. That one was particularly clean and sounded great, but this is way cooler to me. I'm kind of a combo guy. Um, I have um, other deluxe amps. My deluxe reverb amp from the year 1966 has been featured a lot on my channel. also have a 56 tweed deluxe and I will compare the three of them very soon but today I just want to let you hear this brown face 1961 deluxe and so we're gonna do that now <laughs> Yeah. 
Crazy for um, octave sounds, mostly low octaves. I don't, I don't use the high octave sound that much. When I do, I, I really like the kind of Octavia type sound with fuzz and whatnot. So my favorite octave pedals uh, are the uh, the Pitchfork. I use a bunch, uh, which is a new Electric Harmonics pedal. I also like the uh, OC2 by Boss. Uh, I love the Moo FX Octave Divider. That's a really great pedal. And I also have a, a Green Ringer one that I use a lot. But I want to talk to you about the Electroharmonics Pog pedals because those are poly octave pedals. Uh, poly octave generator is what Pog stands for. And I'm, I uh, want to be specifically talking about the Pog two that's this little device here as you can see i have a barefoot button on there because this is the on and off switch and play chords with this device here you have a preset which you have um eight presets uh, i have mine set for uh multiples of things and have the octave sound on while you play the chords and you can't really do that with um older octave pedals like the oc2 so Basically, sorry, a little dusty. Been on the board for a while. You know, I, I'll keep like an organ sound. There's an effect called uh, shimmer, which uh, only, which is a high octave sound that's applied to the end of like reverbs and delays. I have uh, that programmed on here as well. A, a chorus. It's like a, a straight up uh, full step down octave. This is like a very mild swell. You, It's not even noticeable. Then I have a theremin sound, a kind of a funkier filtered octave, and then by just turning all these faders down and turning the guitar output all the way up, I have the last one programmed to be a straight clean boost for the guitar. So it's kind of a little hack. You can use your uh, Pog as a clean boost. Now Velcro on the back, and then you'll see my blue painters tape on here so that uh, if I need to remove the Velcro easily, I can. It's a little, little tip for you. But the Poly Octave Generator 2. I'm going to run through the sounds for you. Here we go. <laughs>
speak to vintage amp dudes for a second you see this this is a two-prong plug on a vintage super reverb amp now I understand keeping your amps original and all that but I would like to say that this is a potentially dangerous thing to do and if you're gonna use the amp on any regular basis uh, on stage especially when there's all kinds of stuff going on and you're you got your guitar on and it's plugged in and it's plugged into the everything's plugged in and your pedal board's plugged in and all that and then you touch the amp it's going to shock you real bad see because you need a ground because this is an open circuit and anytime you touch the microphone or you to any it, it, you could get shocked on a there is a ground switch on the back that you can flip and then you won't get chopped shocked, shocked but if you're going to use a vintage amp just have someone or yourself take the plug just just remove the power cable put it away and get another one and put it on there and that way you won't die see it, i know it hurts the collectability and all that who cares it's like you know deduct a dollar okay it's worth it to not be getting shocked all the time also you know these things are getting to the point where they're 40 years old 50 years old uh, it's the same way with guitars and refrets people think that that hurts the value no it adds utility to the item and allows you to use it more effectively that helps not hurts so put a freaking three-prong plug on your amp before you die I know I have several this amp has a two-prong plug this amp has a two-prong plug a bunch of them have two prong plugs but if I was using it on stage all the time I would have it changed so it's just a little public service announcement Change. Uh -huh. 